We talk about super flex leagues all the time, but you guys are always begging us. Hey, when are you guys going to do a one quarterback mock draft? We are tackling one today four round rookie mock draft with our discord members. If you guys want access to stuff like this, of course, join us over on flockfantasy.com and use the promo code FSE. Both my and Danny's dynasty and rookie rankings are completely up to date. So if you have rookie drafts starting today, then you can definitely uh, get our opinions over there on flock fantasy. And also if you guys want our personal advice, our consultations right now are $5 off. So if you go down to the link in the description, fill out the Google form, pay on there and use the promo code rookie. When you pay, you'll get $5 off a consultation with us and we can help you with, you know, your rookie draft. Who should I pick at this pick? You know, this is what the board's going to look like, all that kind of stuff. So definitely, we never advertise that, but definitely check it out if you're interested. But with that being said, Danny, how are you doing? Doing well, doing well. And yeah, you guys would have saw us put out a super flex rookie draft yesterday. Well, not every one of you guys play in a super flex league for the one quarterback folk out there needing the content. We got you covered today tackling, you know, who goes after B. John Robinson? Where do we feel comfortable taking these rookie quarterbacks? All of that fun stuff on today's video. Yeah, for sure. So if you guys enjoy, if you're new around here, hit the subscribe button. Like if you enjoy the content, comment down below your favorite picks, your least favorite picks. Now let's hit the intro. All right, so we are now in the draft. We have randomized the draft order. Fletsky on the clock at 101. In one quarterback leagues, you're going to need to give me your firstborn, your beachfront real estate for B. John Robinson. To me, you, when you think about startup value, this is a guy that's going to go off the board third, fourth overall in most startups. So for me, B. John Robinson is the clear 101. If I was moving off of him, I would probably want you know two top five picks in this class and maybe a future first in 2024 to even consider moving off of 101 B. John Robinson. So if you guys are you know picking 101 in a one quarterback league, you're not ready to compete yet. That is what I'm looking for in a trade. I'm sure we will get that question in the comment section down below. So I figured I'd address it right off the top. JSN 102 uh, yep. is where he goes off the board here. I think it's really a conversation between him and Jameer Gibbs, of course, who went in the top 12 overall draft picks in the NFL draft to the Detroit Lions. So I'm assuming he'll go one three here, but we might see some surprises. For sure. Any top or the top threes, any order of those guys, whether you want to take Gibbs over to Trax and Smith and Jigba, regardless, Bijan Robinson is going to be the one on one. And depending on who you want to take two and three between JSN and Jameer Gibbs is going to be fine. In my opinion, one Oh four, uh, this personally would be a guy like Jordan Addison for us, QJ obviously being our five. So we'll see what direction plates goes. Uh, I'm assuming one of those wide receivers are probably going to hear their name called though. Yeah, for sure. I, I personally would take Jordan Addison with this pick. Uh, if you wanted to take Quentin Johnson, I, I wouldn't blame you. I think it's a little early to go with any of the tight ends, even in a tight end premium format. I definitely wouldn't take those guys. Any of the running backs, if Zach Charbonnet had gotten a great landing spot, I think you could have made the argument for him here, but him going to the Seattle Seahawks, good draft capital, but not ideal landing spot there. Uh, he'll probably see his name called towards, uh, you know, where we're picking here at the one eight type of area. So we'll see where, uh, T plates goes with this pick. Um, Quentin, Quentin Johnson, Johnson. again, yep. I would take Jordan Addison. Don't blame anybody who wants to go with QJ given the, the chargers boost landing spot. He might actually have more value on the open market when all is said and done. I'm trying to get a gauge right now on what people think. As far as that decision, I've seen anywhere from JSN isn't wide receiver one anymore with Quentin Johnson to, you know, Quentin Johnson was the third best receiver in the class. He should still be the third best receiver in the class. So uh, a lot of ranging opinions on these top three wide receivers. For me, I think it's very clearly JSN, Jordan Addison, Quint Johnson, but I understand it either way. I'm assuming yep. Wags is probably going to go Jordan Addison here. I would assume Jordan Addison here. Uh, maybe he shocks and takes flowers or a running back, but that's the only plausible other scenario I see. 10 out of 10 times this pick should be Jordan Addison. Uh, I believe it was Matt Harmon himself that said landing in a situation where he can be that number two wide receiver right away was actually most beneficial to his development. So you got him over there in Minnesota. You got him learning behind Justin Jefferson. They had no efficient targets uh, at, in the wide receiver core outside of Jefferson last year. Osborne wasn't efficient. Dealing a little run down due to his age. I think Jordan Addison is a slam dunk compliment to what you can expect there in jo Justin Jefferson. And by the way, auto drafting at the one five, not ideal. Yeah. Wags is fired clearly, obviously. Yeah. So, I mean, he took Jordan Addison, so he didn't mess up the draft at all or anything like that. Yeah. Judoyo actually auto drafted in the super flex one that we did yesterday. So hopefully he does not auto draft here. Um, Jordan Addison. Yeah. Like you said, 
a perfect fit for that offense. Calvin Ridley esque was the comparisons that he was drawing. Of course, Calvin Ridley went to an offense that already had Julio Jones. He was able to develop behind him. And I think Addison also can play in the slot with Justin Jefferson demanding so much attention on the outside. And of course, he had his Bolitnikoff season at Pitt while playing in the slot most of the time for Kenny Pickett. So this is the first tier break, I would say, or the second tier break after uh, B. John Robinson at 1 1. For me, I, I don't know if this is any different for you. One, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, probably relatively the same level of tier uh, between JSN Gibbs. Maybe they're a slight tier ahead of those other receivers. But for the most part, I think if you have the 106 in a uh, uh, one quarterback draft, you're probably not loving the Zach Charbonnet landing spot because if he had gotten a good one, you would have just smashed that pick or taken one of the wide receivers, depending on how good it was. But now Judoyo going with Zay Flowers here a little bit, uh, you know, a value lost on that pick from where it probably was at pre-draft. Yep. No, I would agree here. We're going to have an interesting spot at our pick, in my opinion, because I'm assuming one of the running backs, maybe a tight end goes here. Then we're going to have to be debating whether we want to take a quarterback or we want to go with one of our better skill position players. So um, which side are you leaning here? Are you leaning quarterback one or are you leaning, you know, maybe a mayor, maybe a Charbonnet, uh, someone like that in the spot? Yeah, of course, if we were actually in a real rookie draft, this would depend on your team. If you yep. only have Trey Lance and Mac Jones as your quarterbacks, then maybe you go with a Bryce Young here. Maybe you go with an Anthony Richardson here. Um, I personally would just go with Zach Charbonnet, given a team neutral situation yep. uh, right now. If it was tight end premium, also that factors in the tight ends. Maybe I would go Mayer here. I don't love the landing spot for Zach Charbonnet, but he still went top 55 overall in the NFL draft. It's an offense that's going to be productive. It's going to produce points. So, um, we don't know what the future holds. Maybe Kenneth Walker, you know, is not long for the Seattle Seahawks situation. Maybe he's a free agent in two years from now. And Zach Charbonnet going into year three is going to be a workhorse and a good offense. We don't exactly know, but what I do know about Zach Charbonnet was that he was a better prospect by a wide margin than Devon A chain for me. So even though Devon A chain got the better landing spot, I think he is a much better player, more, much more complete skill set, great size good breakaway speed, you know, good receiving ability. And he can carve out at least a receiving role in that offense behind Kenneth Walker to start. Maybe this can be a AJ Dillon, Aaron Jones situation, a Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt situation, a Mark Ingram, Alvin Kamara situation. Um, not that those players are directly comparable, just like a two headed monster productive backfield. One of the best in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, I personally have a chain a little bit higher, but that's mostly because I had him higher in my pre-draft rankings than you. I believe he was your what pre-draft RB nine. He was my RB four. So for me personally, the landing spot did matter a little bit more landing in that pitch perfect scheme with Mike McDaniel, a team that really, really likes utilizing that speed efficiently in that offense. I mean, we saw what Raheem Moser was able to do. So for me personally, a chain is slightly higher, but you're not like if you argued Char, uh, Charbonnet over a chain, like I had Charbonnet over a chain pre draft, and, and I wouldn't bat an eye if you value those guys pretty evenly. So, yeah, for sure. We see Kincaid go off the board here. Uh, there was reports today that I saw from a lot of Buffalo guys saying that they're going to just deploy him as a slot receiver. That makes sense. I mean, he was the best move tight end in the class, and uh, they don't currently have a slot receiver at the moment. They, you know, had Isaiah McKenzie there last year, Diggs and Davis will probably be the outside guys. Kincaid, if he can actually carve out that role. Should be a very productive guy. We see in one quarterback leagues that Richardson and Bryce Young are still first round picks. That's probably about the range that I would value them as well, depending yep. on if it was tight end premium or not. Um, Richardson can still be a top, what, three to four round startup pick at his ceiling in a one quarterback format. So even though in super flex, we know the ceiling is extremely high, top five, top six startup pick. Even in one quarterback leagues, we still see, you know, your Josh Allen's, your Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson types go in the top three to four rounds because they have long-term insulated value and they do provide a value above replacement at their position, even in one quarterback formats. Sorry, I was just a little bit reacting to Jay Mama calling Rasheed Rice baby CD. I might just throw up looking at that. But regardless, Rasheed Rice goes off the board. Tajay Spears at the 2-2. Michael Mayer falling to the 2-1. Flat leaving the first two rounds of a one quarterback with Mayer and Robinson is pretty damn nice. Yeah, definitely, definitely ideal there. Kendra Miller is a guy that I've seen get a lot, a lot of steam. Uh, post draft in super flex leagues. I see people taking them as high as, you know, the two, one, two, two area. We see him go here at one twelve in this draft as well. Uh, I think the Kendra Miller landing spot is good in the long term because Alvin Kamara is probably going to get suspended at some point. Jamal Williams, a little bit older, uh, running back as well. 28 years old coming off of a great season, but I, I wouldn't expect Jamal Williams to be as good in new Orleans as he was, uh, in Detroit in a top five offense. So 
Kendra Miller is definitely interesting. I liked him pre-draft. He was my RB7, I believe, or RB8 in the class. Yep. Um, but I'm not going to go crazy with Kendra Miller. I'm not going to take him, you know, at, at quite as high as some people are. I think he's more of like a mid second round pick in super flex, maybe an early second round pick in one quarterback formats. I would have taken him here over Tajay Spears over Rasheed Rice, but I probably would not have taken him quite that high over Michael Mayer. Oh, and then we get sniped on Roshan Johnson. That would, uh, for the record, guys, uh, we're, we've always been high on Roshan coming into the cycle. Lands in a situation. Yes, he didn't get day two capital, but. I would be shocked if he didn't have a Damian Pierce, Tyler Algier level season where they were a day three, top end of day three running back with the talent, the tackle breaking ability to command an early down role and potentially develop into a three down role, which is what we saw from both Algier and Damian Pierce as the year progressed. Yeah, my comp for him was Ramondre Stevenson, who also had the exact same yeah. career trajectory as those guys as well, where he was you know productive as a rookie, ended up taking over his backfield as a second year player. Um, I think personally... Yeah. I'm leaning wide receiver here um, because the running back position, there's not a lot of draft capital left on the board. We saw Bigsby, we saw Spears, all these guys that got second round and third round draft capital go off the board. Mingo, I'm glad th my stance on Jonathan Mingo is just going to be, I hope somebody else in my leagues drafts him because I do think he probably should have went higher than this. Just given the, the draft capital that he had 39th overall pick first wide receiver off the board in the second round. That's significant draft capital. That's not like going 75th overall. Like you're going to get on the field early. You're going to have a chance to carve out a big role in your offense because everybody's on one-year deals, uh, including Thielen and DJ Chark and those guys. So for me, uh, I'm glad he went off the board. But Josh Downs was my wide receiver five pre-draft. He is my wide receiver five post-draft. He still went in the third round. I get it. It's not you know, the best draft capital in the world. And he also goes to an offense headed by a mobile quarterback like Anthony Richardson, who's probably going to take a year, maybe two years to develop. But I think with Josh Downs, if we get him on the field early, maybe even with Gardner Minshew, if Richardson isn't starting right away, we could have an Elijah Moore like rookie season where on a per route basis, a per target basis, we get really excited about Josh Downs. Maybe Richardson takes some steps at the end of his rookie season and going into his second year, maybe Josh Downs all of a sudden has leapfrogged up to a Jahan Dotson level dynasty asset and a guy that we can trade maybe for you know uh early second round picks potentially late first round picks Jahan Dawson of course yeah. went in the first round so he has a little bit more insulated value but I really like Josh Downs just as the same type of player who can uh who can carve out a role to me I think two eight in a one quarterback draft especially is is stealing I think he should have yeah. been off the board probably two one two 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 three type area yeah no I agree with you there the talent I mean he was clearly our wide receiver fives pre-draft People can argue, you know, given the rookie quarterback situation, given the potential passing volume in Indianapolis, that uh, the landing spot and the draft capital falling from a presumed top 45 level pick to a third round pick will hurt his overall ADP. And validly so. I mean, like, it's not like he's landing in a situation that we expect to throw 600 times as a rookie. Like Anthony Richardson, if he got to 450, 500 pass attempts across the 17 game sample size would be pretty nice. However, what we do know is that Shane Steichen is coming literally from Philadelphia. They had a low passing volume year, year one, uh, last year with Jalen Hurts. Got A.J. Brown added to the fold. Now you have A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. Despite A.J. Brown being a, what, 1,500-yard wide receiver, 150-plus target wide receiver, I don't think Downs is obviously the talent that Devontae Smith is. But Devontae Smith carved himself out a very, very good role as the number two weapon on this team. Same thing with Indianapolis, only it's like a Bud Light version where A.J. Brown's a lot better than Michael Pittman and Devontae Smith is a lot better than Josh Downs. I can still see this being a very centralized passing attack because outside of those two wide receivers, I mean, Alec Pierce is a volatile deep threat. You're hoping Jelani Woods can carve out a significant target role from a, from a volume standpoint. I think he steps in and he is the number two target on this team. Yeah, exactly. And of course, you have a downhill running attack. Play action will work very well with Jonathan Taylor there in the backfield. I, I want to address the Sean Tucker pick at 211. Way too early, man. Yeah. I understand Sean Tucker was once thought of as potentially a first round uh, rookie pick, but he went undrafted. And undrafted running backs, A, the track record is not good. Their value is not insulated whatsoever. So even if Sean Tucker and I, he literally signed with my team. So I'm rooting for the guy. I want him to become the early down compliment to Rashad White in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers backfield, but he was an undrafted free agent. It's possible he doesn't even make it to training camp or make it to preseason games or make it to the regular season. If you spend a second round rookie pick on a guy that could get cut before the season even starts, that definitely uh, screams way too risky for me. I would want Sean Tucker to be in the fourth round of one quarterback leagues, in super flex leagues, 
whatever the case is, he needs to be a fourth round rookie pick. Do not take him in at the 211 or, you know, in the third round even. I think he needs to be way later than that because undrafted running back is the part that matters about it. Doesn't matter yeah. what landing spot he goes to. It matters when he was drafted more so for an opportunity uh, sake because they might just give, you know, Rashad White a big workload, Chase Edmonds some more work and ignore Sean Tucker because he was an undrafted free agent. Yep. No, I agree with you there. I also want to address the value that Jay Mama was able to get on Sam Laporta. Like in a one quarterback league, getting a top 35 pick tight end at the 303, absolute slam dunk there. Love what he was able to do. Um, if you it, realistically in, on that team, if you were subbing out Rasheed Rice for Roshan Johnson, that would probably be the perfect draft from the 103, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, it would be a great draft. I was really hoping Chase Brown would have fallen to us. Yeah. Joy was having a great draft here. Chase yep. Brown is going to be, I mean, spoiler alert, you guys are going to see the sleeper video that I do every year. Chase Brown is probably going to be the number one sleeper in that video because he goes fifth round to the Cincinnati Bengals, which is a great landing spot. Not good draft capital, but that's why he's going to be a third round rookie pick and not a second round rookie pick. And I loved him pre-draft. He was my RB6 pre-draft. At one point in the offseason, he was actually my RB4 pre-draft. So, I really love Chase Brown as a great value here in the third round. Also, don't mind the value there on uh, on Jaden Reed at 3-1. And like you said, Agreed. Sam Laporta at 3-3. So for me, this decision would probably come down to a couple players. I, I yeah, like Deuce Vaughn. I think he's a back. good player. I yeah. I don't think it would be outrageous to take Hennon Hooker at this point in the draft as well at 3-8. Um, but I think Tucker Craft would be my pick here. Um, I think... He of the two Green Bay Packers tight ends, I think he is the better pass catcher between him and Luke Musgrave. He was more productive. They were both great athletes, so it's not even like Musgrave's um, a much better athlete than him. I, I think Musgrave has a lot further to go from a development standpoint, and Kraft is way more pro-ready. This could be a... I will, what, go okay. ahead. I was just going to say, I'll quickly interject. Obviously, I mean, just pause it quickly so we could talk this through since it's our pick. But Yeah, um, I mean, it's your, your, you're the leader, so I got to make right. the pick. I'm just making okay. Kraft. Well, I was going to say, theoretically, you could see... If like a craft, a schoonmaker, or another tight end were to fall to the next pick, depending on like how you view Deuce Vaughn in relation to the other running backs versus Kraft. But like you kind of said, I mean, this guy, I was gonna say that Tucker Kraft route was probably the better route regardless, and see if like a gray falls as an Evan falls, uh, someone like that falls. Cause realistically, like we expect at least one other tight end to go in that stretch. And like you kind of mentioned, Tucker Kraft pre-draft evaluation was a lot higher regarded than these guys. Yeah, he was my tight end four pre-draft, and that was yep. also on the basis of Zach Kuntz getting better draft capital than he got. So he probably would have been my tight end three if I would have accounted for Zach Kuntz being a day three pick in my grades, which I didn't do. I wanted to you know, just do it on a talent basis. So Tucker Kraft, to me, very productive, great after the catch, good fit for the offense. This could very well be a situation like we saw in Baltimore a couple of years ago where Hayden Hurst was the first round tight end. Mark Andrews was the third round tight end, but Mark Andrews had the better pass catching profile. Hayden Hurst was a little older. Musgrave's a little bit older and Tucker Craft could be the Mark Andrews to Luke Musgrave's Hayden Hurst basically. Uh, so yep. I really like that value there. Deuce Vaughn, again, I know he's small, but he's he's a good player. 310 is great value on him. When you're at this point in the draft in a one quarterback league, it is ugly, man. Like it is are you excited to draft anybody here? Like I am not. So yeah. at least a guy who is very productive, had a good receiving profile, could carve out a role in his offense, which is which which is what Deuce Vaughn represents. Zach Evans, six round running back. How how relevant is he going to be? I mean, it's an open backfield. Cam Akers has not been the most productive guy over the course of his career, not been the most healthy guy over the course of his career. So I don't mind Zach Evans as an upside swing as well. Agreed. But uh, I mean, Israel Abanacanda, Darnell Washington, who's caught behind Pat Fryermuth and is ba basically going to be a sixth offensive lineman. Michael Wilson, who pretty much played like six yeah. games over the course of his college career and flashed like once. I agree there on the Deuce Vaughn pick. I think that was solid value. And I kind of mentioned like the difference between Tucker Craft and the other tight ends versus uh, the running backs. I wouldn't even be opposed, like realistically, if I there's a scenario where where Schoomaker's the best available player on our board. Yeah, I mean it's possible. Again, we're we're doing this with the the notion that we don't actually have a roster, a current roster, because yeah. this is a rookie mock draft. We're not doing this with the you know anticipation that we have a roster. We'll probably do videos maybe in like two weeks once of all our of our rookie drafts are done, recapping the picks that we made and the rationale that we made in our own leagues, where you guys can see the rationale that we had because I already had this player, I went in this direction, kind of thing. But yeah. because this is a rookie mock draft, we don't actually have a roster. We probably wouldn't take two tight ends, but at the same time. In the fourth round, if you got a guy who went top 60 in the draft and Luke Schoonmaker, that's a great pick yeah, there great for pick. Finns up. As much as I didn't really like him as a prospect, he goes to a good offense. He got good draft capital, and he's going to have Lead the opportunity athlete. to start potentially for his team if 
um, if he's able to, um, to you know, develop. And Dalton Schultz wasn't that good of a, uh, a prospect either, and he was able to develop in that offense. Exactly, and that's what I was kind of going to allude to as well, that Dallas has shown the ability to you know draft day three tight ends, round four, round five, round six type of tight ends, and end up developing them. Now they're getting the best prospect that they've had added to the team since, I mean, Jason Witten in the second round is the only one, or Martellus Bennett in the late set or in the second round, 2009, late 2000s. They haven't drafted and invested in. Oh, no. The last one that they invested into was Gavin Escobar in 2013. Either way, though, they don't usually invest into a tight end early in their drafts. And I would say out of those three guys, Jason Witten, Martellus Bennett, and Gavin Escobar. That's two out of three hits there. Not to mention Schoonmaker in relation to the other tight ends they have on the roster. A lot more athletic. We saw Dalton Schultz, like you were going to allude to, command 89 plus targets the last three years. Schoonmaker, for what it's worth, profiles as a more athletic Dalton Schultz. He pre-draft comparisons he was getting was like a Foster Moreau coming out of LSU. And, you know, God, God bless Foster Moreau. When he was on the field, he was one of the better looking young tight ends in the league. Yeah, for sure. So uh, if you want to pull up the board here, I just want to showcase yep. where we're at right now. Again, it's gross. Like there's nobody that we really want on the board right now. Tank Dell's not even a bad pick considering he went yep. pretty high. I actually think that Hendon Hooker should probably be our pick here. I, I'm not a yep. big Hendon Hooker guy, I'm but sorry. I mean, we're at the 4-8, a guy who could eventually become a starting quarterback. I mean, Trey Palmer's also interesting. Tampa Bay Buccaneers drafted him in the sixth round. Apparently they were a little higher on him. He's a deep threat. He could provide some speed to that offense. But I think I think the the quarterback makes a little bit more sense at this point. So I'm going to grab Hendon Hooker here. Uh, in one quarterback leagues, again, he's not very valuable. He's not a guy that I'm going to overinvest in. But in the fourth round, I think he's probably worth a selection at that point in time. So again, one quarterback leagues, I, I my pour my hearts are to uh, pour my hearts out to you guys who play in one quarterback leagues. Yeah. At least we play in super flex where these quarterbacks can push up, you know, the board and and push down some better players. But by the time you get to the third, fourth round of super uh, of one quarterback leagues, it is. It's pretty nasty. It's it's not great, and uh, I I do not envy those of you guys that play in one quarterback leagues. Yep. No, I fully agree. Yeah. So uh, again, boards looking disgusting. We'll talk about some undrafted guys, priority free agents. I can just kind of rattle off a couple right now. Uh, Chris Rodriguez yep. probably won't get drafted in a lot of drafts. Kenny I think McIntosh. he's an interesting player. Um, Kenny McIntosh can maybe carve out a, a pass catching role. Parker Washington's interesting. Trey Palmer, like I said, already as well. Puka Nakua, uh, Puka Nakua in that offense there with, uh, with Wicks. the uh, Rams. And I also don't mind Dontavian Wicks and uh, Brenton Strange might not get drafted here. He was like a third round pick to the Jacksonville Jaguars. So he's not bad. He actually just went at the 412 though. The other one that's interesting too, uh, it depends what his uh, versatility is in terms of his listed position. But Elijah Higgins, so he's listed as a six foot three, six foot four, two hundred and forty pound wide receiver. But there's rumblings that he'll actually play tight end in the next level. So if you're looking at a six four, two hundred forty pound move tight end with a very very solid call, but I, I believe when I actually looked at his math bomb score when translated to tight end, he was one of the better athletes. So something to monitor there. Day three pick, maybe he gets a role. You know, you get this young athletic tight end. Always the type of archetypes we like as stashes. Yeah, so let's look at the board right now. We'll just recap the draft a little bit, talk about yep. the tier breaks, talk about where you know players got good value and stuff. So again, tier break at 101. You got to give me your firstborn to get off of that pick, in my opinion. Yeah. 102, 103, a little bit of a tier break in and of itself with JSN and Gibbs in any order, depending on your roster. To me, 104 and 105, also a mini tier break between Quentin Johnson and Jordan Addison, whichever you prefer. And then I think the next tier kind of starts with like Zay Flowers, Devon A-Chain, Zach Charbonnet, Dalton Kincaid, you know, Michael Mayer, uh, potentially the quarterbacks. If you're, if you're in the quarterback market, maybe you, you separate Zay flowers from that tier Yeah, would be my I, only qualm with that. Go ahead. The way I would say it is like, I would say the tier break is between Addison and a chain and flowers is kind of like in his like mini area on his own. But that being said though, if someone said that they valued flowers in the tier with Addison and QJ, I think that's a lot more plausible than anybody else. They said, oh, I have that in that tier, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think the mistake uh, mistake people are going to make is taking A-Chain and Charbonnet over Flowers because he went to the Baltimore Ravens. And we've already you know, kind of made our thoughts clear on the Ravens landing spot. We think it's a lot better than people think. And I, I think once you get outside the top, like once Richardson and Bryce Young go the top quarterbacks, 
you get to an area where you could probably convince me on most guys like Kendra Miller, Tajay Spears, Rasheed Rice, Tank Bigsby, Roshan Johnson, Jonathan Mingo, Josh Downs, Jalen Hyatt, Marvin Mims, not Sean Tucker, like I said, Cedric Tillman, Jaden Reed. Any of those guys could have probably been early second round picks if somebody wanted to. Sam Laporta as well, who went there, um, and Chase Brown too. Like, there's no real consensus this year when it comes to in super flex drafts, like after the 110 to 112 or so, and then in one quarterback drafts after the 107 to 109 kind of area. So, um, yeah, if you guys have questions, just feel free to leave them in the comments. But for the most part, if you if you're like, oh, should I tank? Uh, should I take Tank Bigsby at two five? Like, if you love Tank Bigsby, yeah. take Tank Bigsby. Like, it's not yeah. a huge. It's not a huge like, oh, you're missing out on this great value that I think you're you definitely should be taking. It's not like last year when people were taking James Cook over Jahan Dotson, George Pickens, and Christian yeah. Watson. It's more so like this year, there's no real consensus. Just take kind of whoever you want within reason. Again, don't take Sean Tucker at 211. But uh, for the most part, you can kind of go any which direction with these day two receivers and running backs. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. I would say like the main names that I would be prioritizing after, you know, let's just say Bijan Gibbs. A chain and Char or A chain Charbonnet are like the top four. Uh, I would say is pretty consensus. After that, Kendra Miller, Tajay Spears, these would be the next four running backs. After that, it would be prioritizing Chase Brown in the third round because I do think in most leagues, like you kind of mentioned, he'll fall to the third round area. If he's falling to the beginning of the third round, we both were high on him in the pre-draft cycle, and like we've kind of alluded to all of this video, 28 minutes of it, that he has an opportunity there working in Cincinnati behind a potentially cut Joe Mixon by the end of the summer. Yeah, and even if Mixon's there, I think he can work his way into yep. like a, a complementary role and potentially... Eron's gone. Uh, yeah, Mixon's got a lot of carries under his belt. It's possible that he just fills in for great RB2 value. And if you got that at the 3-6 in your rookie draft, that's going to give like that's kind of represents what Brian Robinson would have represented last year, yep. which is obviously a pick that was well spent for those of you guys that got Brian Robinson in the third round. So that is the end of the video. Again, if you guys disagreed with anything, feel free to let us know in the comments. If you want access to our rookie rankings, like I said, you can get them on flockfantasy.com. Using the promo code FSE, you'll get a two-day free trial to check them all out. If you have a rookie draft and you just want to know who to pick at 104, you can use it for that reason. But I highly encourage you to check out everything that's going on over on the site from us, from Mason, from Zach and Badake, from Pierre and Chris. We're doing a ton of content over there, and you can get 30% off any of the packages six months for free if you sign up annually. And that'll include, you know, getting all of our redraft stuff, getting all of our best ball stuff, getting all of our in-season type of stuff for one price. So definitely check out the site if you're interested. If you got a rookie draft coming up, it will be a big time help for you. Got any startups coming up as well. And then also, if you want to book a consultation with us, again, $5 off in the link in the description. If you fill out the Google form and at the checkout area, you put in the promo code rookie, you'll get $5 off. You can book one with Danny. You can book one with myself. You can book one with both of us if you prefer to do that. So definitely check that out if you're interested. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy. But with that being said, peace out and we'll talk to you soon.